Hi, nice to meet you. My name is Jack. I'm a product manager from Pivotal. This is my friend Hubert. He is a genius engineer from Pivotal also. We come from China and we are super excited to be here to give a lecture. Today, we are going to talk about PL container, which is a customizable and secure runtime for Green Plum database procedure languages. Today, we are going to talk about five things. The first is the problem we want to resolve with the PL container and how the PL container resolve the problem. And then I will give the microphone to my friend Hubert. He will talk about how to use the PL container and the implementation details. At the end, we will talk about the future works. Okay, let's get started. The problem. The problem we want to resolve is a big data problem. Technology and internet change our life. We generate more and more data. We write emails instead of writing on paper. We take photos with cell phone or digital camera instead of using traditional cameras. We chat uh, IM tools. In one word, our life is digital life, and we have more and more digital data. From a Gander report, the total size of the data we generate in 2020 will be increased to 40 zettabytes, which is about five times of those we jumped in 2015, and 15 times of those we jumped in 2012. So we consider data as our treasure, not only internet company, more and more company build data analysis team to analyze data for knowledge and treasure and vision. Greenplum. Greenplum is a well-known data platform. More and more data stored in Greenplum database. But the data science team would like to use Python or R for data analysis because there are a lot of packs or libraries written in Python and R. So compare them together. We have PL Python and PLR, which provide database native analysis, which means we can write user defined function with PL Python and PLR to do in database analysis. But PL Python and PLR are untrusted language. What does untrusted language mean? Untrusted language means it doesn't offer any, any way to restrict what we can do in the user defined function. In other words, we can do anything in our code. So, from database perspective, untrusted language is not secure. For example, bugs in the user defined function may also affect the database. And malicious code, such as delete the whole directory, may destroy the Greenplum database. So for security perspective, only super user can create user defined functions in untrusted language. So that's the problem. We call it triangle dependency, which means 
that the scientist depends on DBA too much. That the scientist depends on database administrator to install the package or libraries which uh, the user defined function depends on. And the data scientists need to submit the user defined function to the database, uh, database administrator for review. And then database administrator can create the user defined function in Groom Pump database. At the end, the data scientist can write and get the result. So in this case, the database administrator needs to be a superman because DBA need to understand the ground plan database. And he also need to understand the operating system so that he or she can determine whether we can install the package or library or not. Moreover, he also needs to understand the Python and, and R code so that he or she can figure out whether there is a bug or malicious code in the user defined function or not. And he also needs to familiar with the uh, Python and R libraries, such as TensorFlow. When there is a bug, the data scientist team needs to submit the user defined function to database arbitrary again and create it and run it again. We need to the, do the full circle. Even the worse, when the data science team become larger and larger, they will submit more and more user defined function to database administrator, which makes the database administrator frustrated and crash. So that's the problem. Let's go back to the problem again. The problem is the triangle dependency. Data scientist depends on DBA too much. To resolve the problem, we need to break the triangle dependency and make the data scientist be able to create the user defined function in Groom Palm database directly. The solution is to make the untrusted language to be trusted. How to resolve the problem? The solution is to put the untrusted code into jails. PL container is a jail. PL container provides a secure and isolated runtime for procedure languages, which makes the untrusted language to be trusted, which means bugs, malicious code will not impact the Groom Plum database. So, what the PL container? In one sentence, PL container is a customizable, secure runtime for Groom Plum database procedure languages, both. Uh, both for trusted language and untrusted language. PL container is a Green Plum database extension and based on Docker container. It provides a stateless, customizable, secure, and runtime, uh, and isolated runtime for proxy languages. So this last shows the PL container architecture we need to install Docker on each Green Plum database second house host. When there is a query come in, the query executor will pass the user defined function and read the configuration file. And then he will tell the Docker service to launch a PL container. After that, there will be a lot of communication between query executor and the PL container. Query executor will send the user defined function and the data to PL container and write and 
get the result from PL container. After that, we will transfer the result to the master. So with PL container, the sequence we run user defend function is changed. First, uh, query executor will launch a PL container at the first time and only at the first time. And then transfer the user defined function and the data to the PL container and write and get the result. So let's summarize. PL container use Docker con user Docker to build a isolated, secure, and customizable runtime for procedure languages. We can install libraries or packages in the Docker image. In this way, data scientist will not depend on database administrator to install the library or practice or review and create the user defined functions. Okay, I will give the microphone to my friend Hubert. He will talk about how to use PL container and the implementation details. Uh, thanks, Jack. I'm Hubert, uh, an engineer at Pivotal. I will continue to talk about how to use a PR container. Uh, to install PR container is very easy. Uh, we have two ways to install it. The first one is to install from the source code. Just uh, make and install it. The second one is to install from the GP package tools. It is used to, to install PR container on a GPDB cluster. Uh, we also have some um, system requirement. Currently, we only support the Send OS platform, and the Green Plan database version should be above 5.2. User could build uh, his customized Docker images uh, to create a, a specific Python RR environment. Uh, this is still an experimental feature. The minimum requirement uh, to build the Docker images is to, you must have a Python or R environment and add the libpython and libr in your shared library paths. You can also customize your images. And the following example shows how to create an Anaconda 3 Docker images. Uh, we use the configuration file to config the PR container. Uh, runtime is a basic unit to specify the type of Docker. Uh, it includes the ID of the runtime, uh, the image the runtime use, uh, and the co command the runtime uh, to execute. Also the shared directory between the Docker and the uh, host machine. Uh, we also supply the settings memory MB to specify the runtime uh, memory limit and uh, the setting CPU share to setting uh, the runtime, the CPU priority. We supply the management tools called PR container to manage the image and the runtime. Include the add, delete, backup, restore, and so on. Okay, here is an example of how to uh, use the PR container UDF. Here is an example uh, of PR Python UDF. Uh, now I, I will show how to migrate it to the PR container UDF. As you can see, uh, the two UDF are very similar. There are only three differences. The first one is you need to create an extension PR container for the database firstly. Second one is you need to add the Container runtime ID in uh, um, the second one is you need to in okay um, the second one is you need to specify the runtime ID at the beginning of the UDF. In our example, the runtime ID is PLC Python shared. The last change is you need to change the 
language name from PR Python to PR container. So the migration of the legacy PR Python or PRR code to PR container is very easy. And now it's demo time. And this demo will show how to install, config, and use PR container. Uh, it's a DBA's responsibility to install PR container. DBA need to first download the PR container binaries from the Pivotal networks, and then install the PR container with the GP package command. DBA could check that the PR container is installed into the GP home slash lib slash postgresql folder. Now, DBA could create a database called Python test and log in the database and create the PR container extension for that database. Next, DBA need to install the Docker images. The images is also downloaded from the Puritan networks. Then use the image add command to install the Docker images on all the GPDB segments. It may take some... Let's check the installed Python images. Here it is. Next, DBA could use the runtime add command to add a Python runtime in the configuration file to configure the PR container. The ID is PRC Python shared, the images is, is the one we just installed, and the memory limit is 100 megabytes. We could double check the runtime we just added. It's called PRC Python shared. Okay, that's all for the DBA's job. Uh, next, I will show how a data scientist use PR container. Suppose John is a data scientist. He first log into the Python test database and create a table test. Insert, insert some test data. Okay, now John could create a function py log, which is the one I showed you earlier. And select this UDF on the table test and get the result. We can use the docker ps command to say that the container is started. Now John created the session and we can see the container is also removed. Next, John created a UDF called PY memory, which will allocate a large amount of memories. John will first allocate 10 megabytes memories, the query succeed. Increase to 80 megabytes, the query succeeds too. Now, increase 100 megabytes, the query failed. This is due to a set memory limit for the container to not exceed 100 megabytes. Finally, I wanna show you how to create an, a customized Docker images. John could write his own Docker files with Anaconda 3 and TensorFlow. John could also build the Docker image based on a Docker file. The name is called PR, PR Container Drawing. Next, DBA need to add the runtime for the new created images. The runtime is called PRC join. And the image is, is also the join the, with the Anaconda 3 support. Double check the runtime, PRC join. Now, John could create a UDF called TensorFlow which calculate the multiplication of the two metrics. The UDF will be run on a PLC join runtime with Anaconda 3 and the TensorFlow. The UDF result will be 12. Okay, 
That's all for the demo. Now, let's dive into the PR container internal. I will go through the message protocol, SPI support, pluggable backend, resource management, error handling, and finally, I will review the PR container performance. The first item I want to talk about is the message protocol. As discussed in the PR container architecture, and to execute a UDF in the PR container, we need to communicate between the query executor and the container process. Here, the query executor, short for QE, is used to execute the query plan. Well, the container process is used to execute the UDF. So we define a message protocol to describe the message passing between it. I will illustrate it in the right picture. First, the QE will create and start the container. Then it will send a ping message to the container process. The container process will then send a POM message back to QE and QE will know the connection is successfully connected. And then QE will send a call request messages to container along with the function argument and the function body. The container process will receive a call request and pass the UDF content. There are three cases. If the container process encounters the SPI, it will send a SQL messages to the QE. And QE will execute the SPI and send the SQL result back to the container. The second case, if the container encounters some error when running the UDF, it will send the error messages back to the QE. And the QE will actually will quit and send the error messages back to the client. If everything is fine, the container will return the UDF result back to the QE. And the QE will continue its query plan execution. Uh, I, want to, I want to talk more about the SPI support in PR container. SPI is short for Server Programming Interface, which enable UDF to run a database queries. As you know, the SPI query is generated inside the container, but it will run at the query executor side. So we create a message of SQL type to handle it. For normal queries, a container will just send the statement to the QE, and the QE will execute the query. For the prepare query, the container sends the statement to QE, and QE will generate and catch a plan for the statement and send the plan's address back to the container. For the template queries, the container will send the statement along with the plan address to the QE, and QE will run a statement based on the catch plan. Okay. Pluggable backend is also another feature in PR container. Backend is where to run UDF code. At our initial design, we have a discuss of which backend to use. In fact, if we separate the execution of Python and R functions in a separate process, the UDF bugs will only affect the UDF process, while the GPDB core engine will not be affected. Its assumption is that there is no malicious user, only bugs in the UDF. So which backend is appropriate is depend on the requirement. Currently, we support the Docker as our sandbox environment to run a PR container. But in future, we also plan to support uh, Kubernetes to run a PR container on top of Kubernetes. So a pluggable backend is very important. Okay, uh, I, I, I need to record it on this slide. 
pluggable backend uh, is another feature of PR container. At our initial design, uh, we have a discussion of which backend to use. In fact, if we separate the execution of Python and R code in a separate process, uh, the UDF bugs uh, will only break the Python or R process. And the GPDB call engine will not be effective. Its assumption is that there is only uh, UDF bugs and no malicious users. So which backend to use is depend on the user requirement. Currently, we support Docker as our sandbox environment. But in future, we also plan to run the PR container on top of the Kubernetes. So a pluggable backend is very important. Uh, we support two levels of resource management in PR container. Container level is used to limit the resource for each container. And the extension level is used to limit the resource for the whole PR container component. Let's first visit an example. Uh, suppose the host machine has 128 gigabytes memories and the DBA assigned 100 gigabytes memories to the uh, GPDB. Then GPDB will use its internal memory auditor to allocate, to track the memory usage for its, quer its queries. But in a, in a concurrent environment, some user may write UDFs, which consumes a large amount of memories too. But this kind of memories cannot be tracked by the GBDB internal memory auditor. So GBDB still consider it could use up to 100 gigabytes memories. But in fact, 60 gigabytes memories has already been consumed by the Python UDF. So, GPDB's normal queries may encounter the out of memory. To fix this problem, we introduce a PL resource group. This is a feature we integrated with the GPDB resource group extension framework. The normal GPDB resource group is used to control the resource used by the MPP engine, such as the join, the sort operators. Well, the PR container resource group is used to control the resource uh, for the PR container component. DBA could create a PR group with uh, 38 gigabytes memories and assign only 50 gigabytes memories to the GPDB call engine. If any Python or R UDF will reach the memory limit of 38 gigabytes, the UDF will be out of memory killed. But the GPDB call engine will not be affected. This picture, this picture shows the implementation of PR container. Resource group is, is based on the SIG group technology. All the Docker container will run under the PR group node. If the memory limit of the parent PR SIG group node is 38 gigabytes, then the memory usage of all its children should not exceed 38 gigabytes. If the process who reach a ceiling will be OM killed. The most important thing is that the container failure should not affect the GBDB core engine. Security is the main reason why we introduce a PR container. There are some cases the container may fail. The container may fail to create, fail to start, may crash when running, or the catch container may crash. We use the try catch to protect the GBDB call engine and redirect the error messages to the user. We also need to consider container cleanup. Since the query may be canceled, our query executor may encounter some error. Our catch a QE may create it idles for a long time. We use a separate cleanup process to delete the containers when the above case happens. Finally, 
I want to review the performance of the PR container. Uh, what's the optimization we did and the best practice and the benchmark result? The first optimization is a cache container. In the red picture, you can see only at the first UDF call, we create and start the container. And the subsequent queries will reuse the containers. Let's save the container start time, which may be more than two seconds in some cases. The second optimization is we use a Unix domain socket instead of TCP. The third um, optimization is a type conversion. We all optimize the basic type conversion between the Python object and the database object. For PR Python, all the building type except bool need to be convert the Python object into a string and then convert the string into the database object. It takes quite a lot of time. When the return value of the UDF is a large array, as we will see in a later benchmark result. The last optimization is uh, we support to use the C group to manage the CPU share of the Docker container. This will enable us to make some runtimes more important than others. Since our current PR container implementation is based on the green plan, whose executor follow a table by table fashion. So if there are too many tuples and each UDF on that table is a short running UDF, the domain socket send and receive delay will harm the PR container performance. So we recommend two best practice. One is using array instead of multiple rows. The other is using complex UDF instead of the simple one. Uh, the test environment, our benchmark is, uh, we use a six a virtual machine, it's with 19 gigabytes memory and five processors. Uh, we have three workloads. The first workload is a long running UDF. We use the sleep function to simulate a heavy computing, where the container process will use one second to execute the Python code for every tuple. We do the experiment on different uh, data sets, and we can see there's no performance downgrade. The second workload is the large input array functions. There's two times performance downgrade for the Python. This is mainly due to the delay of the domain socket. Well, we can see there is 30% performance improvement for R. This is due to in PLR, the type conversion from the database object to R object need, need to con convert to a string first. The last uh, workload is uh, large output array functions. We got a four times performance improvement. The reason is that the speed of type conversion from the Python object to the database object is too slow. It again need to convert to the stream first. Okay, now I will give the microphone to my friend Jack again. Thank you, Hubert. Okay. PL container is just a baby. He was born in this January. We hope he can grow to a giant. So let's talk about future work. First thing we're going to do is container of Twitter or cloud support. When we talk about Docker container, the first thing we will think is Kubernetes. And Pyoto also has a Kubernetes distribution we call it PKS, which means Pyoto Container Service. So to run PL Container in Kubernetes or Pyoto Container Service is the first thing we are going to do. In this case, PL Container 
will not consume any resource in Green Plum database cluster. We can leverage the computing resource in container orchestrator or cloud. Second thing, we are going to support more languages. For example, Python 3 and C program language. This requirement is pretty interesting. It's from a big bank from China. They want to write the UDF in C program languages. And we're going to support Anaconda. Anaconda is a famous Python distribution which works on data analysis. The third thing is support more technology. When we talk about Python and R, the first thing we can think is to do the machine learning, deep learning. So to use GPU to accelerate uh, machine learning or deep learning algorithm is the thing, first thing we're going to do and add the support for some machine learning or deep learning framework such as TensorFlow or Keras. This slide shows the GitHub repo for Pure Container. Pure Container is fully uh, open sourced. On the list side is the documentation of Pure Container. Welcome to try Pure Container and enjoy it. Okay. That's it. Thank you so much.